uh, I think I covered all the subjects there. Second question, do pre Stewart. Hey, Julian, have you really noticed the influx of dinoflagellates back like five or six years and more? It wasn't like that. What are your thoughts and any advice you can give? Uh, I think, Dupree, that you're paying attention now. <laughs> dinoflagellates have been around a lot longer than humans have been on this earth, and they've been a part of the reef keeping hobby since the very beginning. So, um, as far as why you might be noticing it more in your own systems or in other people's systems, uh, I can't be absolutely certain why that would be the case, but I can tell you if you, you know, you look at the book I wrote on the subject about uh, controlling algae, uh, the book's called Algae, a Problem Solver Guide. One of the first things I say about dinoflagellates is that they are an indication of an imbalance in the system, a disturbance. Um, so you can have a healthy aquarium if you get in there and do a major uh, disturbance, a change. Uh, sometimes it's not even you uh, actively doing it. Sometimes it's a power outage. Uh, so a shock to the system where the biofilter that's in your live sand and your live rock um, is exposed to conditions it's not normally exposed to, uh, lack of water movement, oxygen deficit, uh, big change in temperature, uh, or, you know, more active involvement by you if you get into a, a, an established reef aquarium and you use a, a gravel vac and you siphon out all the sand or really disturb it a lot, you may promote a boom of dinoflagellates uh, simply because you have upset the balance of uh, microorganisms living uh, in the sand and in the substrate, and dinoflagellates tend to bloom when that kind of a disturbance occurs. They also are common when you first set up an aquarium, you add live rock, you've introduced dinoflagellates and uh, a stable um, microbiome has not uh, developed yet. So it's sort of a little turf battle of microalgae, uh, bacteria, dinoflagellates trying to determine who's gonna make use of the nutrients first until enough of them grow and, and impede each other and achieve a, a steady state. Um, you know, the second part of that question might be, well, okay, if I don't ever want to have dinoflagellates ever again in my system, because when I see them, my fish get sick and my corals die, um, chances are you're going to see them to some extent at, at any point because you can't totally prevent disturbances in the system. You're, you're going to have something happened where a heater breaks, power outage. Uh, I, I don't know, I'm not even gonna enumerate all the things, but eventually something happens and you see some dinoflagellates. But one of those long-term blooms of dinoflagellates that make the tank look you know, like a brown rust colored mess with oxygen bubbles everywhere. Um, the, the way to avoid that is not creating a disturbance and when it happens, you don't want to get in there and perpetuate it by doing massive water changes and continuing to siphon and disturb it. Um, you kind of want to let it stabilize. And the use of ultraviolet sterilizers is very effective in curbing the growth of dinoflagellates if you do have a bloom. Um, it's not going to prevent it in all cases or stop it in all cases, but it, it, it is very helpful. Um, when you do have a bloom to add a UV sterilizer to reduce it and get you back to that steady state. Um, 